You're listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. Bites, advice, and rumors straight from the source. The Slow Ride Podcast.com and on Twitter at the Slow Ride Pod. Hello and welcome to the 270th episode of the Slow Ride Podcast, the Bauke Malima is God edition. This is Tim in Orlando, Florida. This is Matt worshiping at the altar of Malima in Minneapolis. And this is Spencer in Boston. You guys, I thought we were doing a whole Halloween thing for this episode and it's already what gone off the rails. Well, we've, we've, we're, we're worshiping him. It's sort of a, I mean, you don't even know what kind of offerings we're going to be. I see. For him. I'm going to be burning, uh, Belkin, Belkin products, um, <laughs> which is going to create a very foul, uh, toxic smoke cloud, right. which well, will cause probably some mutations in, uh, surrounding sure. wildlife's next generation. Sure. Yeah. And those little devil spawns will fly to Europe and poop on his rivals next year. All right, so little guy is starting bonfire of USB adapters and, and uh, things like that. And yep. uh, Tim, what are you doing to get into the uh, spooky holiday spirit around bouquet worship? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Pretty much just burning my bank statements because I don't have any money. But if we're going to go down the old team route, we might as well go into the bank statements because I can't think of anything that Blanco Pro Cycling did, if you recall that team. Oh, yep. wow. I remember. That is Good a poll. Times. Spencer, what are you offering to the Bauke God? <clears throat> well, I'm... Uh... I have a couple of replicas here that I've made of um, Japan Cup trophies that I'm setting up. I've got two of them um, ready to offer up uh, at the uh, the altar of Bauke here, who is our new hero of the Slow Ride Pod. And I mean, I think we should be the first to say we've been on the Bauke bandwagon for a long time. This guy has been our number one choice to win races uh, for as long as I can remember. And uh, he just always kind of, uh, you know, just knocking on the door and we'd just been waiting for him. Always had faith. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly not our number one choice to be fifth. (laughs) And you're absolutely right, Spencer, because Bauke clearly did the double. Yes. Two weeks in a row of winning the biggest races on the cycling calendar. What a capstone of the season. Spencer, we were requested by friend of the podcast, Chad Brown, to put Bauke's face on the Mount Rushmore of Slow Ride Podcast fandom. Ooh, I'll do it. How do you feel on that? Do you want to be the bearer of bad news? Uh, I mean, if he gets a third Japan Cup, he's going to have to go on the Rushmore. But I, I think I, he already gets it, man. I Lombardi and Japan Cup in the same year? Like, it's, we couldn't uh, have made up that crap at the beginning of the season. We would have said that and we would have thought we were just it's true. Making it up. It's I mean, yeah, perfect. you get you get you get your your Tom Boonins who are doing their Flanders Roubaix doubles, but then you get your Balkes who are doing the Lombardi uh Japan Cup double. And it's like how do you compare one to the other? It's it's you know, they both deserve to be up there. To recent but, listeners of the Slow Ride podcast who may not know this, the Japan Cup is one of our favorite races and our ultimate goal is to get flown over to Japan to cover the race. So if anyone can pull some strings, <laughs> we would love to come make the Japan cup the rightful place. It deserves on the cycling calendar yes. after the world road championships and the real capstone to the world calendar. Yeah. Yeah. Sixth monument uh, of cycling the Japan cup. Now we have a lot to talk about this week, guys. Of course, we're going to do a little cyclocross roundup including a feature of the slow ride podcast on the broadcast call we are also going to do a our world famous world tour roundup and since it's halloween time it's going to be extra spooky yes extra spooky so (laughs) dig into that candy bowl and make sure you keep the smarties for yourselves because it's going to be one to remember 
So we've mentioned it on the top. Balke Malima takes the win over a game. Michael Woods, just one second down at the Japan Cup. Yes. The only thing missing from the best race on the calendar is a equivalent women's world tour race. Were you guys able to watch any of the Japan Cup? I was only able to watch highlights, but it yep. was good. Yep. I, the Japan Cup kind of has the perfect timing on the calendar for us because, you know, since it starts at roughly three in the morning or <laughs> two, two in the morning, if you have a late night like I did getting in from the West Coast, oh. it's kind of the perfect thing to watch. It is. It's kind of the revenge for those our, our friends on the West Coast of the United States who can watch the race at regular time. Yeah. Yeah. It gives them a little taste of what it's like <laughs> to roll out of bed and watch a bike race. Move on with your day. Did you guys notice uh, the young kid in fourth place at the Japan Cup? Just a young up-and-comer, little sideways crook of the neck, Timmy. Do you notice that? I did notice that. 43 years of age, Francisco (laughs) Mancebo, still out there. I I was just stoked that he beat Sepp Kuss um, for the the sprint for fourth place. He couldn't. How awesome would it have been if Francisco Mancebo got on the podium? The internet would go ape. And so yeah. mad if he was up there. Rightfully so. Yes. Da, I mean, yeah. Did you know he was still racing? Yeah, I knew he's still racing. I mean, you know, I get I get like a newsletter from him all the time and like, you know, I'm like on his mailing list and we kind of do like a you know, like he sends me a letter and I have to send it on sort of thing. Was the Francisco Mancebo retirement after Operation Puerto, the smartest move any professional cyclist has ever done. Uh, like he kind of just waited for everyone else to get busted. Well, He's like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to retire. And then amazingly, he just shows up in America less than two years later racing again. Yeah, but here's the problem with that. In a way, it was smart. But guys like Valverde and Scarponi cop to it, right? Those guys kept racing in Europe. Yeah. Uh Mensebo, uh, he's on Bonesto, which now would be Movistar. He's on AG2R for a second, and then he's on Relax, and then he's on For Case, and then he's on Rock Racing, and then he's on Five Hour Energy, and it just goes down pretty quick. The, the yeah. cycling rankings from there. So yeah, he's still racing, but he hasn't been able to get back and race on a big team, you know. No, that is very true. I didn't think about it that way, little guy. Thanks for bringing in the rationality <laughs> to this. Do you know he was, he, Sepp Kuss, he beat Sepp Kuss in the sprint. Sepp Kuss was like six years old when <laughs> Mansebo went pro on Bonesto in 1998. Wow. That is crazy to think about. That's, yeah, that's, I don't know. Think about that. So let's let's flip gears a little bit. Let's get into cyclocross racing because there was a cyclocross World Cup and friend of the podcast and fellow Wide Angle Podium member show, Bill Sheikin, was promoting the DCCX. So let's start with a quick shout out to our friends of the DCCX, including an ultra muddy Sunday race in which Stephen Hyde reclaimed the top step in American cyclocross by beating Kerry Warner and Cody Kaiser. And on the women's side, Rebecca Farringer took out Courtney McFadden and Russell Nuss in the, I mean, the mud was epic that I saw on the Sunday race. Yeah, it was. Nice and sloppy. I've, I hope it doesn't cost them the rights to that venue. Oh, I doubt I it. Um, they do such a good job with that venue and it's, uh, they have such a good relationship and it's such a cool venue. If you haven't been, uh, it is all contained within the grounds of the uh, Armed Forces Retirement Home. So it's like private land that's closed off from everything. And you're basically rolling around in there like front lawn slash golf course, uh, driving range area. Uh, it's it's super cool. I've, I think it should be fine. I know those guys will do a good job cleaning up. Uh, but uh, yeah, one of those things. They- it's been going on for like six years now, right? So they've been at least six years. So oh, more than they've that, been pretty. Yeah. Okay, I apologize to Taylor and Bill and the gang for how long it's been going on, but they definitely have it prepared. Uh, definitely used to the the dust out there, but it was fantastic to see. Quick shout out to Kerry Warner for winning on Saturday, 
just over Stephen Hyde, mm-hmm. who took the sprint over Andrew Dillman at the same time. It should be noted, Stephen Hyde is back. <laughs> he might be back. Yeah, let the re- record show. <laughs> Tim has cursed Stephen Hyde on this Halloween episode. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> for the rest of the season. Oh, wait, is that, is that what you said, Tim? I'm sorry, my earpiece was falling out. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what I said, as Rebecca Ferringer also doubled up on the weekend with yeah. a win over some, the Runnels and Courtney McFadden on the Saturday Bill, I can't wait to listen to more of it over at Crosshairs Radio, part of the Wide Angle Podium Network. And then let's now go straight into the World Cup in Bern, Switzerland. Bern. We'll, the, the women's race, by far the most exciting of the, the two races um, uh, between the men and the women. And that's Anne-Marie Wurst taking the victory mm-hmm. over Carmen Alvarado and Anna Kay. Yeah. She was happy. Wurst was like overjoyed yeah nice worst was absolutely thrilled her twitter account was hilarious afterwards yeah. saying if you would have told me that i would have won i wouldn't have believed you that's amazing yeah, it's nice to see yeah. and then on the men's side little known rider matthew vanderpoel just rode away from the race winning by 35 uh, seconds over tune arts and zing. michael van tornout uh, you might have got that one let's check yeah, the yeah. tape on that one Check. You can't just pull up uh, last year's results and read them off, Tim. You gotta, you gotta actually check the men's race now because Vanderpool oh well, is not there I yet. I thought it was Matthew Vanderpool. I was wrong. It was Ely Isabert winning his <laughs> third Cyclocross World Cup. Pronunciations yep. are for you. Yeah, he's this year's Matthew Vanderpool. Are you, I know. We're all guys... worried about what we're going to do without a Matthew Vanderpool, and somebody has stepped up and, and jumped into the Matthew Vanderpool role. Yeah. I didn't realize he had an understudy, and it's great. Is it? I I've been a little bored with the races so far. I got to admit, I miss Vanderpool. Now, hang so on, you would hang like on. to be more bored? Yeah, I wasn't more bored because while um, Vanderpool was really dominant so far. Uh, Isbert's been super dominant, but he doesn't make dominance as fun. Like he's obviously the best <laughs> rider and he's obviously the strongest and all that, but it's not as breathtaking. You know what I mean? Like you don't, you see him go like hit some corners and do things you're like, yeah, he's the fastest, but it's not like, how did he do that? You're not questioning the laws of physics. You're <laughs> right. not, um, right. you're not, there's never a point where you're like, your tongue hits the floor and it rolls across the floor like a cartoon. And you got to roll it back up. That never happens. You know, maybe he'll get uh, there. I mean, are you saying he's just the new, uh, wild van art then, uh, Eli, Ellie? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Like is it, he's is it obviously Eli the best, Ellie? but I'm it's sorry. not, it's not amazing. I'm, I'm excited for Vanderpool to come back. Cause, cause he, Isabert obviously raised his game this year from last year. Like he's been like getting better every year. So like, Yep. I'm excited to see if he actually can be a challenger for Vanderpool because that would be cool to see again. But well, I'm missing I'm missing the pizzazz of Vanderpool. We're gonna find uh, we're gonna find out pretty soon here, little guy, if uh, if yeah, he can hang. I'm excited for that. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, it's still the racing's still pretty When's good. When's MVDP just, coming back? I think he's waiting until November. Now is the word. He's taking a little extra time. Right. It turns out he's a human being that occasionally has to rest. Well, I am definitely excited to see it. So we will uh, see. And then, um, you know, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and scan through these results. Uh, pretty much, yeah, just what you would expect. Michael Van Tornout getting his third place. And uh, in 16th place, Jens Adams, also of Belgium. So it, I don't know. I just, It was a fun race to watch, but it wasn't exactly breathtaking until the final lap when the Slow Ride Podcast Twitter account checked in <laughs> and we got our nice call out, which was fantastic. Slow Ride Podcast. Uh, wondering where that Matthew Vanderpool got shorter. <laughs> Ellie Isabit has taken on the mantle of Matthew Vanderpool and now he just rides away. That acceleration to get rid of everyone. That was nice. So uh, I definitely didn't know it was coming, so I did giggle. <laughs> Quite That's <a> bit. good. <laughs> I watched it. So let's rack, uh, let's continue on some other uh, news happening in the world of cycling before we again get to our spooky, scary world tour ranking wrap up. We w- we need to talk a little bit um, about some news in the uh, some riders in the news, and I think we're going to go right away to one of our listener emails from Brian Hancock to kind of get us off 
get started. Okay. I think the big story with Ecoff has yet to be discussed. Let's play option A or B, game to illustrate. Here's how it goes. Imagine you're Ecoff and you're updating your Palmares for next year. Do you list the option A, 2019 U23 World Championship, DNF, or do you list it <laughs> option B, 2019 U23 World Champion, asterisk, Mm. And then you have a footnote that just says, while I may not have the stripes in 2020, we all know who the champ is. So option A or option B, what do you've got? Your okay. best JP Hancock. It's the little guy. What would you do if you were Ecoff and you were unceremoniously stripped of the world championship stripes? Uh, definitely, I would go with the asterisk. And I mean, I believe he's going that route by suing, <laughs> taking the UCI to the court of arbitration, right? Do you think he has a case? Uh, I mean, he's not going to get the win, but I think he's just in a way trying to make make them make make them make the case and make them make the rule clear. Yeah. Well, I think if you are able to uh, make the, the the rule clearer, then you wouldn't have the drama that we all want in cycling, right? Right. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I understand that, but I'll you know, I mean. We've you, you have argued on this show for clarity, so <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so I think, given the two options spelled out in the email, I would definitely be leaning uh, for the asterisk. But I think I would, if it were me, go with option C, which is just U twenty three world champion, and. <laughs> <laughs> just crayon stripes. I would double down <laughs> on my on my uh, sponsorship packet and put that photo of me winning the race right on the cover. Uh, let's take this an extra step further. Do you think there's a way that he could put his uh, championship stripes, but like like the kit design is the championship stripes, but they're out of order? Do you think- oh, like he he does it. He does it a little different so the the UC I can't get him. But yeah, it's so clear it's, to it's, everyone involved that it's kind of like the bootleg version of Nike's that you can get up on like, you know, what, 34th Street in the garment district of <laughs> New York City. You're like, ooh, are those real Nike's? But the swoosh is going backwards. Yeah. Like this, like this Rolex I bought. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know. I mean, everybody knows, like, the only time this U23 thing really matters, like, on his on his uh, resume is for the next year or two. And, you know, everybody knows he's the winner. Like teams, I don't think any team manager is like, well, he didn't win the, he didn't win the world championship. So I wouldn't sign him. You know, like they, they, yeah, you know, they nobody, feel like he won. Nobody comically pulled back that contract and then tore it up in front of him. <laughs> like after they had slid it across the tape, wait no. a minute. He's signed, <laughs> he signed on teen web through 2021. So yeah. like, it's not a problem. I don't know. I still think it's a little, a uh, little goofy that he's trying to um, sue the uh, the UCI because uh, I'm if all there's anything for it. we know. UCI probably has a lot of lawyers to really dodge <laughs> a lot of responsibilities, i.e., Lance Armstrong <laughs> fallout. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Oh, it's such a horrible bureaucracy. So, as we get into um, some of this discussion that we'll be touching on a little bit about the UCI um, roundup for the the men's world tour, there's a there's something else I wanted to get to. And that, that is okay. when I was doing some research on the teams, okay. pro cycling Wait, stats has a, you did research. Yeah. 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 Oh. Pro cycling stats is a pretty awesome page called the end of season statistics. So as an example, um, Ma- Maximiliano Richense, who is currently the Pan Am champion of the road race. Okay. I did the math here. He finished in the, Bottom top 10, 31 times this year out of 89 races. So that means 35% of the time he finished amongst the very last people in the race. Now, he did have some race wins and some top 10s. I found that pretty amusing. Well, you know, he's sort of like the, uh, he's like a designated hitter then, right? (laughs) You go up there, you swing for the fences. Yeah. You hit a lot of home runs, but you also strike out a lot. There's no shame in that. Of 188 World Tour race days, this includes all of the stages of the Grand Tours, of the 188 
days, 181 were won by world tour teams for an astounding 96% conversion rate. <laughs> yeah, That's impressive. And all, and all the other wins were Matthew Vanderpool, right? They have to be. Matthew Vanderpool had maybe won like FDJ race that you could just throw away. Confidus won one thing at the Volta, so that's one <laughs> world tour thing right there. Yeah. This is I don't know, I just found that a, a little uh little S- disingenuous like Seriously, other other than Vanderpool, I mean that's gotta basically be the Volta. Like the the non world tour teams that won at the Volta, you know? Because Burgos and Ka- and Kaja win? No, yeah. Marios yeah. and then and then Confidus. And then Israeli cycling team might have won a world tour race this year. So that's that's like it. There you go. Pretty uh, pretty exciting through all the way. Well, guys, is there anything else you want to hit on? Uh, no. I think we're Let's I think boom. it's about time for a pre lap. Let's get yeah, into our pre lap, and then we have ultra excitement on the flip side. <laughs> cool. Uh, this is Stephen Hyde with Cannondale Cyclocrossworld.com, and you are listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we are there again. We talked about it last week. We are back for the Wide Angle Podium Donor Drive. There's lots to discuss. We have a prize that we are working on giving away that we can't wait to talk about, so bear with us. You definitely want to become a member of the Wide Angle Podium Network because we are your one-stop shop for your favorite cycling, entertainment, and news, completely independent. And if you sign up as a member, we have some great freebies only available during the drive for donors at different levels. Those include shirts, buttons, stickers, and the world-famous Aero Race pins, which are guaranteed to give you 50 happiness watts. Spencer. Yeah. How easy is it to become a donor? Oh, Super easy. All you have to do is head over to wideanglepodium.com, which is probably already saved in your favorites on your browser, uh, and click on the donate button uh, to head over to the donate page and just choose your level, $5, $10, whatever you want to do a month. You can pay monthly. You can pay that amount up front in one annual uh, kind of lump sum, or you can uh, just do a one-time donation of any number that you want um, and uh, just figure out what works for you. And after you do that, you get to actually choose, go down a, a, a list and click off checkbox, tick mark all the uh, shows on the wide angle podium network that you listen to, that you want to support that uh, or your, that you want your money to support. Right. So if, if there's shows you listen to and other ones you don't listen to, you can tailor where your money goes, which is very complicated <laughs> on my end of things, having to do the bookkeeping, but it's Make a it kind of a thing people. that, yeah, I, 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 we really, we really, um, want to give you that, you know, that choice, that power with your money, because you're, you're donating it to us to, to help us do what we do. And we want to make sure it goes where you want it to go and supports what you want to support. So head on over to widingopodium.com slash donate, uh, and uh, get yourself signed up, get some freebies, get a ton of bonus content. Uh, I've got a Life in the Peloton episode that will be nowhere else huh. other than in the bonus content. Whoa. Uh, that will be going That's up shortly. That's awesome. Yeah, so this is the kind of stuff you can get uh, by being a member. Also, if you're a member uh, and you enjoyed uh, playing roller derby over the summer, uh, you get 500 bonus points to play with in Roller Derby if you are a Wide Angle Podium member, and you can also create leagues to play with your friends. Now, Spencer, when we were out at the Trek World Cup, we did get a donated prize from yes. our friends at Trek, and that includes a Tune Arts or a Belgian National Cycling jersey. Yes. So I have an idea here. I'm Uh-oh. thinking all new supporting members of the wide angle podium network and all continuing members of the wide angle podium network get entered into a raffle contest to see who gets this tune air it's jersey what do you think i like it because we want to thank all of those members that are already people that have already joined up thank you over the years we've been around for four years we love 
each and every one of you. And without your support, this podcast would not be possible. Thank you also for not fast forwarding through this little quick little comment to talk about the Wide Angle Podium Network. We're here for you. Yeah. So if you sign up now for the next two weeks, you will be entered into a raffle for the Toon Eretz Belgian National Champion jersey. And we're stoked to be able to give you that opportunity in addition to the existing bonus packs for those that become members. So head on over to wideanglepodium.com and click donate to find out more, score some of that free content. And uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to do as much cool stuff as we can with, with the donations, uh, you know, supporting Katie Compton's racing last year's uh, supporting roller derby this year. Um, who knows what we'll do next year. And, um, you know, Bill's heat check videos, those are coming straight out of, uh, we have an extra support. <laughs> oh, by the way, on the yeah. heat check videos, I checked in with Bill, seeing if the algorithm's a little biased for those that actually showed up to DCCX. And he <laughs> said, absolutely. It's been hacked by the, uh, by the Russians uh, and see. it is almost a hundred percent fueled by who showed up at DCCX. Let's and I see. love it. Nice. I, I can't wait for the drop. Um, so anyway, that's it for wide angle podium donor drive stuff. You guys, uh, long time listeners know, know about it. Um, I know a lot of you guys are supporters and we really appreciate it. And if you're not now is a great time to get on board and, uh, not have to feel the burden of guilt for the rest <laughs> of the year. Yeah. Um, you want that off your shoulders before you hit those climbs. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one other thing we need to get to is uh, our, our sponsor for the episode is the Works Hydro Shot. We've talked about it before, and we're going to talk about it again because they are a great partner of ours. Um, the Hydro Shot is a portable uh, power cleaner um, suitable for using on your bikes, uh, not like a power washer that's going to blow all the grease and, and everything out of your bearings and your headsets. Uh, this thing is just the right amount, uh, 320 PSIs to take care of, uh, all your cycling needs for these muddy races like DCCX. Uh, even though the race might never happen again because it was so muddy, <laughs> you'll be able to use your shoes and your kit again because you'll clean them right off after the event. Uh, it works great. It's completely portable, self-contained. Uh, you just need a source for water, uh, whether you drop that in a, in a, stream or a pond or you carry around a five gallon bucket uh with water or you use the bottle cap attachment to uh attach a a like a two liter bottle to it uh you're good to go and we can save you 15 percent on that hydro shot uh if you head over to your clean bike.com and use the promo code clean bike it's going to get you that 15 percent off uh of the hydro shot either the 20 volt the 40 volt extra batteries the brush kit, all that stuff. We, uh, we got you hooked up. So check it out. Your clean bike.com. Awesome. And with that guys, we're going to check in with Nostradamus as we get back to the show. This is Mitch Docker and you're listening to life in the Peloton. Also the slow ride podcast. Afterwards. <laughs> All right, here we are. As I mentioned previously, we have a prognosticator of epic proportions in our normal podcast uh, recording studio, Spencer. Mm -hmm. How do you feel to hang out with someone that is so good at reading the tea leaves? Uh, predicting the future of professional cycling in the United States. Yeah, you know, it it it's it's tough uh sitting here with little guy sometimes because he a lot of times is just like, you know, I know I know these things, but I can't tell you. <laughs> oh, um, there's nothing worse than someone that says that they know something and they can't tell you. Yeah. That's the worst. And it's, little guy is not one of those. No. I'll just blab it out. He told us <laughs> exactly what was going to happen. He called it weeks before it was announced. Little guy, Taylor Finney, one of my favorite professional cyclists, mm -hmm. is retiring from professional cycling. And yeah. you called it. I did. I don't know. I just knew it was coming, man. Okay, so let's get into it a little bit. What do you think of his announcement? Saying he might want to do some enduro riding, maybe uh, focus on some gravel racing. 
I am absolutely stoked by this. Yeah, and I think it's a good time to be like a good time to be an ex pro, but still be kind of pro, right? Like look at uh, Ben King, or you know, or like uh, yeah, not King or yeah, Ted King, Ted King. But you know, like there's a lot of there's a lot of options other than being on a traditional road team to still get you riding. Yeah. And he gets to do his art. I'm I'm absolutely stoked for him. I yeah. I'm, I think I'm, any. I think it's t- it's got to be super tough to walk away from the top, but it's it's nice that he's able to be honest with himself. You know. Now, Spencer, every any discussion with Taylor Finney and his career and how he did is obviously going to come down to the most tragic moment in that Oof. career yeah. and what how it altered his um his projection from where he was going and what how it ended up and of course that's the motorcycle crash when he was taken out, I believe, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, about four years ago now. Yeah, Nationals, U.S. Nationals. And it was near um, life-threatening crash, um, and his comeback was something that has been well-documented. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how, do you, how would you put uh, Taylor Finney's career in the uh, grand scheme of things of American cycling? It's Yeah, that's a tricky one, right? Because he was on track to be like a, a Perry roubaix contender um you know he that won type the juniors of paris Bay, right didn't he uh, yeah um yeah like he, he, 23 or something yeah he turned out some good performances in in the uh in the senior event as well um and yeah that that crash really just changed changed the trajectory completely like you said and uh i don't i don't know if um if it's something he just never recovered from physically or mentally or a little bit of both but uh yeah i mean he was uh he was the next tyler farrar <laughs> in a good way um and he just i uh, i don't know if he ever achieved what he wanted to out of cycling and that's that's kind of what's maybe the biggest bummer for me is i i don't i don't think he's leaving necessarily with any regrets but i i, I feel like he has to there has to be something there that's like, man, I know I he, can't get that, so I don't need to bother beating my head against the wall for it. Yeah, it was like he was so close, and then he wasn't. You know, I, I think you're absolutely right. I, um, it's it's going to be always hard to put it in context, contextualize how that happened and affected his career, but it definitely his comeback was a story of the ages and something mm-hmm. I'm happy that I got to witness um, from fan level. So. Congratulations, Taylor, for a great year. I'm excited for the next chapter and especially ready for your next album to drop, um, as we've uh, talked about before. Let's get into a couple of listener emails before we get into our spooky, scary um, rankings of the world tour. Tune Arts is the new Kevin Powell's from Matthew Pryor. Stay with me here. They are both lovable and skilled writers who just aren't quite good enough to win the big show. As writers move on, to on to the road or retirement you always think it's their time to shine but they just get eclipsed by the next talent to come along from the junior ranks <laughs> by the way Lars Vanderhaar Har doesn't qualify for this group because his biggest competition is clearly Lars Vanderhaar <laughs> sincerely Minneapolis's favorite Matt oh PS right. I see Tom Boonen Tom Boonen won a car race in Belgium this week the little guy must be proud yeah. Well, yeah, what do you think of this? Two more arts. See the new Kevin Pels. Uh yeah, I guess I see it. I can kind of see it. It's, <laughs> it's it's playing out this year, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, suppose. I thought he was gonna dominate this year, right? Yeah. But that doesn't happen. Do you think he's maybe saving it? Right? Like, I mean, we're only well, three weeks into the you know, three World Cups in. Yeah, I mean we should probably consider that considering uh how many years we, we and everybody ragged on uh Wow. Until he came through and won the world championships, you know. So, I mean, I, 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 I get the sentiment here, but I do think Tone Arts has surpassed Powell's level. What? Um, really? I, I kind of feel like Van Tornout is the current <laughs> Michael or Kevin Dieter. Powell's. I mean, take your pick, but I'm thinking Michael. Yeah, I. Th- but I think. Maybe, but I mean, like, well, I guess we got to wait for, for him to have a longer career because Kevin's, Kevin's <laughs> got some rich, he's got some good wins in there, you know? I mean, he, he had yeah. a good long career. Kevin also has the drive side dismount, which is my favorite. 
Yeah, and Toon's not a drive side dismount guy. And yeah. right now, Tim, we're in the golden age of drive side dismounts. I know. I was watching Bird, and there's so many drive side dismounts. I was so proud. So many drive side dismounts. It's pretty crazy. I feel like when we started Cross, there was just Kevin basically, and he wasn't even at the top yet. So me and Spencer were 100 percent incorrect in telling you you were wrong, and no yeah, one would ever be able to make it that way. When we went to cross practice and we had our PVC pipe barriers and you guys are like, Tim, you're doing it wrong. Wrong. It's almost illegal for you to do it that way. It's disgusting. <laughs> you're the worst. I don't want to be, in fact, yeah. drive yourself to the races. You, you wanted nothing to do with mm-hmm. me because of my drive side dismount. It was great. Then we remembered you had a wagon at the time, so we had you drive us to races. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had to keep you around, but it was embarrassing. Hey, guys. Thank you for making me relive the trauma and painful memories of the 2013 Paris Bay. When you mentioned how Zednik Stybar was taken out by a spectator, to this day, I believe he would have had Cancellara in the end. It hurts not only because Stevie is my favorite, but mostly because I put a fiver on him with quite a good return. <laughs> the odds were great that year as he wasn't yet among the favorites. I could have been around 500 pounds richer. Yeah, I still hope that nice. someday he will finally get to lift that heavy cobble over his head. Greetings from rainy London, the Brompton Brazer. Hey, Brompton uh, Brazer. Brazer. Uh, you're wrong. He never would have caught him. I want to redirect to the previous question, Tim. You didn't give me a chance to mention that that uh, the writer was completely wrong in their premise because I'm the best Matt in Minneapolis, and they they <laughs> they the rest of their the rest of their their letter is void because of that. Is it okay? Sure. That's Let's fair. get back to the Brompton Brazier question, though. <laughs> you really don't think Stybar would have caught Cancellara? Is this the Cancellara with the motor in his bike, and now he's going to challenge us to a hill climb race in Europe? And everyone's going to be like, oh, my God, uh, I can't believe you said that. And, I don't even remember when the motor controversy was, but uh, you weren't going to catch Cancellara at that point. Time this, trialing? Come on. This was a this was a Stybar had this in the bag. <sighs> this was... I'll have he, to go back and watch this. I don't. I don't think so, man. He was in the getaway car. He had the money. He was out of the bank on the way to victory. Do you- uh, actually taken out by a, uh, a, a rogue cameraman. Uh, it was a camera lens that hit him as he went by and knocked him off uh, balance. And as rumor has it, the Slow Ride podcast knows who the cameraman is, but we will never <laughs> reveal this Wait, information. <laughs> so here's the... Here's the other question I have on this, though. If um, at what point can we relive our dreams of Stybar coming back to like full time cyclocross? I mean, um, right? Like, we all want this. We want him versus Matthew no, Vanderpool, Lars Boone. We, we say this, we say this, and all cyclocross fans say this. But we watch Lars Boom come back, and we are so sad when we see him pedaling around in squares. And do we really? Do we really want to see Steve R do that too? Well, yeah. I mean, but we want him to come back and train for it. Not the way Boom shows up and. <laughs> um, I, I kind of think no, he was I'm, training I'm, I'm for with you, it. Boom. It might be, it might be a, it'll be kind of like a bad high school reunion, you know? Yeah. yeah. You show up, you're going to see some old friends and then you're like, whoa, hey, what have you been doing? Ooh, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> Ooh, this isn't as fun as it used to be. I don't want to hang out at Perkins till two in the morning. You know, oh, that kind would. of thing. All righty, guys, we have arrived at our annual world tour roundup. Spencer, you came up with this wonderful idea. Mm-hmm. Take it away. Uh, so in the, in the spirit of this season, uh, this episode is our, our last one before the Halloween uh, holiday here in, I don't know, the world, I guess the whole world does Halloween, don't they? Um, I don't know about that. I don't, even want, I don't even want to know what Halloween's like in uh, England, because I've had some of the candy before, and it's horrible. <laughs> well, funny you should say that, because here's what we're doing to rank the World Tour team seasons uh, team by team. We are going to rate them on a scale of Halloween candy. So we're going to take them one by one, and e- each of the three of us is going to give them a candy uh, as a representative score Uh, for their season and uh, give an explanation a sentence or two as to how that candy is justified as representing them and their season. All right. Sounds good. Little guy, are you ready? I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. So I think we should go 
based on the World Tour rankings as we climb up. So we will start at the bottom. Ouch. Okay. okay. And we will start with Team Dimension Data. Oh. Oh. Little guy. Team Dimension Data, if you look at their season. Yeah. They had nine total victories. <laughs> yeah. Are any of them World Tour? Uh, I don't think so. They have, a, they have a couple of African Continental Championship wins. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, pretty few and far between. So how are you going to rank your uh, Team Dimension Data um, season? Um, Man, that's tough. I think I'm not a big fan of uh, like, uh, what is it, like airheads. I just kind of hated those things. Uh, I'm going to say yeah. they're airheads. Oof. So you hate All Dimension right. Data. Well, I will not- say that they are forgettable, like the tan M&M. I don't know if you guys remember the old tan M&M back in the <laughs> mid-90s before they got rid of that bad boy. Mm-hmm. It was one of the more popular colors in the bag before they replaced it, I believe, with the blue M&M. So the right. old, right. they're, they're the tan M&M. All right. Uh, I'm going to give them a, a, a candy ranking score of Junior Mints. Oh, now well, Junior Mints. Not bad. You look at them. You think you're gonna like them. You taste them. They seem okay, and then they get weird, and stuff just goes downhill, and you're just kind of like disappointed. Yeah. That All right. Sense. Up next, we have near the bottom. We have Team Katusha Alpetian. Um, I will go first. They had five wins on the calendar this year, including a stage at the Giro a stage at the Tour de Yorkshire, and then the Trofeo Palma with Marcel Kittle. And that is going to lead me to my ranking. They are the fun dip of cycling. (laughs) Okay. Mostly because it's awesome. As long as you have that little candy stick before you eat it. And Marcel Kittle was the candy stick of Team Katusha, where it was awesome until he was gone. And then it was nothing left to celebrate. (laughs) So the fun dip of cycling is Katisha Alpetian. Okay. All right. I like it. Uh, uh, Spencer, what do you got? Yeah, go. Uh, Katusha, I am going to go with uh, just kind of an oddball choice. Like when you open up your candy bag after after making your way around the neighborhood and you find Swedish fish <laughs> no. in your bag, you're like, you're not disappointed, but you're confused. And that's oh. how I feel about their season. Yeah, I think in the same way they they look like they should be good. Like I think we we decided their kit game's been getting pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh and you think they're maybe going to be cool. Uh if you listen to the latest life in the Peloton, Nathan Haas will even say, "Hey, we thought we were going to be cool." At Katusha, <laughs> and then it turns out it was a terrible hellhole. So I'd say they're sort of like you open a box of chocolates. You grab one, and you're almost 100% sure it's whatever you want. Maybe you want one of those ones with a cherry that's going to burst in the middle or something. And mm-hmm. it's not. It's like a weird toffee that gets stuck in your teeth, and it's a little sour, and you're a little confused why that. You think, maybe, I don't think it's supposed to taste sour. That's Katusha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Up next, with a total of six wins, triple C. Whew. Ouch. And of those six wins, two were by Patrick Bevan, one at the uh, in New Zealand and one at the Santos Tour down under. Then three by Greg Van Emmerat, and they did win a Hammer stage. So Spencer, knowing yeah. this, how do you rank Triple C? Ooh, that's rough. Um, I'm giving them. I <laughs> I I like them more than their results. Uh, would justify, and I think I'm going to give them Reese's peanut butter cups, which is really a, a that's, strong. That's a, I feel like it's a, a good strong mark. candy, and yeah. I'm I'm willing to go that route because I still have faith. Like it's when I go to the store to grab grab a candy bar, random candy bar. It's not the first one I go for, but it's always a good one, and I feel like. Despite those results, uh, that is CCC. Wow, that's, I feel like that's a high. Yeah, if I give got one of those in my candy bag, I'd be pretty happy. 
Well, what do you got, little guy? What's in your candy bag for him? I was going to say CCC is more like a Hershey's Crackle Bar because oh. uh, you've oh. never actually seen a full-size one, just like you've rarely <laughs> seen a CCC win. You just see those little ones pop up, which is kind of like a bunch of podium spots. Mm-hmm. Well, I would rank them like candy corn because Whoa. you're always disappointed when you see it in the bag and it's orange like the team and nothing else other than that. So up oh, next, saving that. Gurpama FDJ mm. with a combined 24 wins includes several on the world tour tour to Romandy Giro de Italia. They want a stage. So little guy, why don't you listen along here? Because I am going to rank them as the mounds of the okay. Halloween candy world, mostly uh. because the rap, the rapper job looks fantastic. Like I look at that and I'm like, that's wow. a good looking rap job. Yeah. I like I like how they I like the presentation. I like the brand that is Mounds. There's even a little song to it. There, but when you is. bite down into it, it is the nastiest candy bar in the history oh, of the world. Much really? Like you don't the like F- it. Groupama FDJ season. All those wins and still forgettable because hardly any of them were on the world tour. <laughs> you don't like Mounds. You're not a <laughs> coconut man, Tim. No. Um oh. that's funny. You live in a land where a coconut could hypothetically fall on your head. Um I'm going to go with Almond Joys then just because you, you drew me out. Uh, oh. <laughs> I like, I like, I like FDJ more than you and I like Almond Joys more than I like Mounds. And I, this I is... still, and like oh. you said, the fact that the song makes no sense is great. This is unprecedented. I also was going to go with Almond Joy <laughs> like Little Guy chose, but I was going for it for the reasons that Tim expressed for oh. Mounds. Which was you the guys. packaging just is crisp and on point. And I don't know if we're going to top this. This is unbelievable, you guys. <laughs> well, all right, I, guys. Let, yeah. <laughs> let's we move on consensus. over to the AG2R team. 14 wins, several, uh, just two on the world tour. So, little guy, Ouch. you're going to start us off just with two? AG2R. Yeah, only two. Oliver Nason won the Bink Bank Stage 7. And then yeah. stage 17 at the Giro d'Italia for Nans Peters. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Nans had some good results, though, at the Italian Classics, though. He got like a fourth. He did. So but not that's victories. Gonna, that's going to bump them up to box of good and plenty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. You're at a movie. You're having a good time. Hey, look at that. AG2R. Pop some good and plenty. No. You guys know I'm a sucker for when it comes to how kits look, and you know I'm a big fan of the AG2R kit. That's why I'm going to go with Raisinets, because they look really, really good. Sometimes you accidentally grab them, and then you put them in your mouth, and you're like, wait, I just ate a Raisinet. This thing is disgusting. Worst candy of all time. Similar to Situation with Mounds. So there you go, AG2R. Another forgettable season for a world tour team. Ah, but the brown shorts with the Raisinets. I, I, I'm... I see where you're going. Did I tell you guys uh, I saw some brown shorts on the Greenway like a week ago, oh, two weeks that's ago? That's unfortunate. It was <laughs> great. It, it totally made my day. Tim, um, real quick, what were those stats again uh, for AG2R? How many wins? Oh, I think it was like 14 wins and two in the World Tour. Two World Tour wins. Okay. That's what I thought because I give them a ranking of Twix uh, for the the two sticks that are included in, in a Twix uh, bar and... Um, you know, again, wrapped in that kind of caramel, goldish packaging, looks enticing, just just does not deliver how you want it to. It's fine, but it's <laughs> it's not a Snickers. Up next, we have Team Sunweb. Six World Tour victories to go along with nine on the year. Guys, I will start this one off. They are clearly the 100 grand bar of cycling, mostly because... <laughs> Uh They have Bling Matthews, and that's the closest we have to Bling is the 100 grand bar. All right. I can't top that. I'm seconding that. (laughs) Oh, that's pretty good. So um, I have them down. Now, you know, earlier I said CCC was the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Sunweb is the Justin's Peanut Butter Cups, the like Whole Foods version, like the dark chocolate uh sort of healthy version the the kind where if you opened up your 
your your your bag after Halloween, you would be just <laughs> appalled that really? these were in your bag. They're not bad, but they have no business being there. Oh, weird. Oh, wow. All right, I would that that's the only one on this list I'd buy. <laughs> <laughs> so, little guy. Up next, Trek Segafredo. Yeah. 11 wins, but two that really matter. Of course, I am talking, well, three, because we do have Tom Skewens win in the Latvian uh, World uh, National Championship. But two that matter, Lombardia and the Japan Cup by Bauke Malima. How do you rank Trek Segafredo? I'm going to give him, I'm going to give him a Kit Kat bar. It's tasty. It's delicious. And but you know you only break it into a couple pieces, and that's all. They only had a couple pieces that really connected oh. this year. Okay, Interesting. Spencer, I am. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going with peanut M and M's, dude. I, that's exactly what I had. Damn it! Oh, why? Perfect. What's your reason they're, here? They're filling. They they give you everything you want. Little chocolate, little little substance in there, and you just you're never unhappy. When you see them doing well. No, I was, I'm, I'm just going to add the caveat that it is like, especially after Bauke Malima does the double, that this is like a Costco bag of peanut M&Ms. <laughs> yeah. Like this is like, it says extra large sharing version, just handfuls at a time. This is like the peanut M&M that was in our rider for all of our live shows, except all of the colors are included. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Our rider for our live shows. <laughs> yes. All right. Up next, guys, we have the Team Brain Merida. I can't wait to see what what choice of candy comes out of this wonderful team. Uh-huh. They had 16 total wins, several on the world tour, including the um, win by Nibali in the stage 20 of the Tour de France. Little guy, what do you got? Uh, I, hold on, hold on. I'm searching for a candy I hate. Uh <laughs> Uh, I can jump in here. If yeah, go in, go in, go in. I'm looking for something I really hate. All right, so I've got uh, I've got suckers, <laughs> just in general, just like um, all like all types of suckers. All types of suckers. They're all disappointing, and it kind of seems like anybody who signs for Brain Marita is a little bit of a sucker. Now I've added uh, Smarties. By far my least favorite candy when I see that at the bottom of my son's candy d- jar. Because <laughs> let's be honest, that's why Halloween is awesome. That I see that those are the... W- In fact, when I do eat begrudgingly the Smarties that are left, I throw the wrapper back into the pumpkin that has all the cans. <laughs> that's how... Uh-huh. I don't even have the, the decency to throw away that wrapper just because I wanted to prove that I ate the filth that is the Smartie. And right. that is the Brain Marita team. Oh, I got it. Cadbury cream egg. Oh, those are bad. <laughs> those are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have Lotto Sudal. Lotto Sudal took 23 wins, little guy. They do yep. have Jelly Wallace, as we've talked about, and Caleb Ewing, who cleaned up at the Tour de France this year. It's actually a pretty decent year for the Lotto Sudal boys. Yeah. Um, I am going to go ahead and do my ranking here, and I'm going to talk about Airheads extreme i don't know if you guys have ever had airheads extremes but basically they're airheads that have okay. a bunch of the sour coating on there okay and that it's that extremeness that is caleb ewan's sprint style when he puts his head over the handlebars getting so close to the front wheel that i'm just living the extreme lifestyle <laughs> i see <laughs> really <laughs> yeah okay uh i get, i'm gonna go i i think i'm gonna say they're kind of like a Pearson nut roll. Oh, God damn it, little guy. Why are you taking my shine? You can you can have somebody else be Pearson's nut roll. They're Greatest Pearson's candy nut of roll. all time. They're Pearson nut roll to me. Um, they always hit the spot. <laughs> the red and white. I mean, what, what, you know. So for our listeners that aren't from Minnesota, do yourself a favor. Just Google, Google it. Pearson nut roll. And then order, order a box. Some. They're so good. Send us a picture on the Slow Ride Podcast Twitter account or Instagram. We'd absolutely love to see it. We need to get them as a sponsor. We need to work. On <laughs> yeah, we do. Spencer, what do you got for Lotto Sudal? Lotto Sudal, I have uh, marked down as Baby Ruth. Ah, um, nice. Just, I, I, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it, but I just don't like it. And I, I don't have a good reason. I just yeah. don't want it. 
What is a baby? It's like a caramel core or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of it's, nuts in it. Peanuts. It's got a, too many nuts. It's just too much. <laughs> I so, I can't deal with it. Just like all these teams that I can't remember sometimes who's on them and what I'm supposed to care why I'm supposed to care about them. There's a lot of candy bars that are chocolate with with kind of a gooey middle, and I can't remember the difference between them. You know. Well, little guy, up next is Team Education First. Boom! I know exactly. Eighteen what they are. total wins. A couple on the road on the world tour. They had Rigoberto Uran. So, they still got naturally, him. I am just going to say that they are the flavored Tootsie Roll of my son's mm. candy jar, mostly because <laughs> the regular Tootsie Roll is disgusting. The flavored one is a lot better, but it's still not the what? best candy there. And it's got a nice flashy color, kind of like their kits. What is the flavored one? What is it? What yeah, is it would it? be like orange or strawberry. Oh, yuck. That sounds terrible. Well, all right. I think they're nerds, man. Look at look at a bo- look at a package <laughs> of nerds. That is their kit. It's purple and, it, they, and pink, and it kind of fades into each other. Uh, it's it's kind of like on. the nerds box that has two different sides flavors, and you combine yeah. them. And they're definitely the nerdiest team. Yes, yes, they, they're, they're, they have a high glasses glasses ratio on that. Yeah, team. they're making me feel good about showing up racing in my glasses. What do you got, Spencer? Yeah, so I actually, um, I'm going to change mine last minute because I also have nerds for the exact same reasons that little guy said, <laughs> and I think it is the perfect answer. But I'm also building on that. I'm going to just say an apple uh, because <laughs> somebody always puts an apple in your candy bag when you're out on Halloween and you get home and you're just like, what the hell is this? Uh, and well, yeah, if you it's know it's good crisp. for you. You know it's wholesome. You know it's the right thing to do. Uh, and so, you know, you know, it's going to treat you right and you're probably going to want it the next day, but nerds is the right choice. Not too bad. There is always the Apple person. I always had the person that would give you like some quarters and be like, oh, go buy your own candy. But anyway, you guys, uh, here we go. Mitch and Scott with a select wide ranging amount of wins, including several tour to France stages. Um, I will start this. Um, they actually had a pretty decent year for me, so that's why they are going to be my version of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. One of my uh, favorite candies, good all around, and I love kind of their uh, their output, right? Their social media output, I absolutely love throughout the year. It's one of my must-follows. So Mitchell and Scott is just the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup of my candy collection. Love it. Sounds good. Uh, all right. You got Mitchell and Scott. Cool. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got them down as Butterfinger, um, oh. a real solid choice. Um, you know, like top top five candy bar out there. Uh, no complaints at all. Absolutely. Huh. I think I think we all have the same feeling about them. Is like, yeah, pretty good. I'm gonna say they're a Clark bar, peanuts, taffy, yum. Clark all right. bar. Wow. Up next, UAE Team Emirates, 30 total wins. Let's just cut to the chase. They had Fernard, Fernando Gaveria and Pogachar, who won several of their events, and yep. Christoph. I will start. They are the Charleston Chew. Once again, <laughs> another great-looking candy bar, but when you bite into it and you start to look what's really in the ingredients, you're kind of like, I don't know if I'm supposed to like this team. Yeah. Sour Patch Kids, man. Yuck. <laughs> Nice. What do you got, Spencer? I am giving them a, a pretty poor grade here with a bit of honey. Um, oh, oh, no. Just just kind of old person candy that <laughs> nobody really wants to deal with. But oh, when you get down to the bottom and there's nothing else left, eh, yeah, it's all right. But up next is the Movistar team. Obviously, <laughs> I am going to go first because it is my favorite team. Okay. And they have Alejandro Valverde, so therefore, movie star, as if Spencer read my mind, they are the Werther's original of, of Halloween candy. <laughs> Jesus. It's given to you by the grandpa. I can see Alejandro Valverde actually handing this out to his grandkids after he steps off the podium of victory. And it's actually a pretty decent candy. Nice old-fashioned butterscotch. I'm a big fan of the Werther's original. <laughs> so there you go. All right. All right. Spencer, you want to do it, or you want me to go? Sure, I'm. Uh, I have them marked down as runts, uh, <laughs> yeah. because 
<laughs> because there's just a little bit too much, too many cooks in the kitchen there, too many flavors going on. Uh, they can't seem to sort it out. And uh, yeah. And then you get the bananas. You're yeah, like, and oh, then you get the banana. <laughs> worst one. What do you guys, the little guy? I was going to say that they're the nut goody. Another Pearson's Minnesota favorite. Delicious always. Uh, just like Valverde. Been going on forever. Can't go oh. wrong. Can't go wrong. Nut Goody, another classic from the Pearson's Candy Company on West 7th Street in downtown St. Paul. That leads us to our next team with 39 wins, the Astana Pro Team. Several World Tour stage wins throughout, including a pretty good season by Jacob Fulsang and Miguel Angel Lopez did all right. So little guy. Yep. I got How it. would you rank the Astana team? Okay, well, I already used Almond Joy, so I can't use that even though the kits, the kits, man. I'm going to say they're like a Chico stick. I don't think I want Astana to win, but much like a Chico stick, I don't ever think I want a Chico stick until I'm in the checkout at a corner store, and it's right there. It's like 25 cents. I've got an extra quarter. Why not? Let's go for it. The same way I feel when Foo Slang's off the front. I'm like, yeah, let's do that. All right. Not too bad. What do you got, Spencer? So Astana, uh, I, I picked this one not based so much on flavor as I did uh, appropriate titles. Um, I'm going with Whoppers. <laughs> oh, not too bad. That leads into my next team, Tim Ineos, who took obviously the biggest win of the season with the Tour de France. They had 26 total victories. And just because it's Team Ineos, I am going with Milk Duds, mostly because of the name. <laughs> Like it, I uh, I followed a similar vein, and uh, I'm giving Team Ineos a score of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> oh man, mm. am I the only one that likes Sour Patch Kids? Huh? Yeah, I think be. they're gross. I'm gonna call them Big Hunk. You seen this Big Hunk bar? It's no, it's gross. Just Google it. <laughs> no, I I will. <laughs> it might actually be good, but it, I don't know. It looks kind of gross. With 51 victories, Team Yumbo Visma comes in near the top of the rankings. So hopefully at this point, we are now getting into some good candy bars with Dylan Gronenwagen, Jos Van Emden, so many great wins, including Primoz Roglic and Mike Tunson taking the first Tour de France jersey. So when you're digging into your Halloween candy bar, bag sorry and you're pulling them out i know i am reaching straight for the skittles and that's how i'm gonna say team yunbo visma one of my Mm -hmm. favorite candies what a fantastic year i would argue the greatest of all the years in the world tour possible good argument i'm gonna say they're like reese's pieces same way a lot of yumminess in there i'm sensing a theme here uh Maybe it's the polka dot uh, fade on their kit that has uh, subliminally influenced all of us. Uh, but I am choosing dots. Uh, oh. for, I think it's for, stuck uh, in the teeth, man. I don't know. They're just, they're there. That's exactly what Yellow Lotto has been doing all year is they're just hanging around and they're always there. <laughs> Can't get rid of them. Can't get rid of them. Up next, the team of Peter Sagan with 46 victories. Bora Hansgrow, the German of all teams. So, little guy, how do you choose the candy that relates to them? That's a good question. I am running out of candies. That's uh, the there's trouble. There's one now. obvious choice here. Really? There's, I don't. There's not a candy for them that jumps out at me. Oh, there's one that jumps out for me, and that, of course, is Starburst. Mm, because Peter Sagan has that just kapow of flavor, and no mm. matter what, it's still great. Every single flavor in a Starburst pack. Another great season. A top two candy for me. So if you've noticed, I have gone <laughs> from Skittles to Starburst. I've yeah. noticed you like bad candy, but I uh, I have a Bora here with the obvious choice. The slam dunk of Halloween candies, which is the Haribo gummy bears. See? Yeah. yeah. That's true. For Peter Sagan's famous uh, post-finish line snack. You have to choose it. And you heard it here first on the Slow Rad Podcast. Carlos Bettencourt's next team. Hopefully, let's go, Carlos. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, man, I hope Hot he goes tip. there. 
I can't top that too. Spencer, you're, you're, you, yeah, you nailed it. Gummy verse. Awesome. Right. And finally, the very last choice, the last team, the Wolf Pack. Of course, we were talking about Team Quick Step. And at the very top, my favorite candy bar after just gorging on all of these nice fruity Skittles and Starbursts and a variety of selection, I always reach in and I always steal the Pearson Peppermint Patty. Huh. My favorite candy. <laughs> Okay. And that is the Quick Step team, by far the best team on the world tour this year with 68 victories, dominance wow. all the way across, including an epic yellow jersey run by you, Julian Alaphilippe. So there you have it. Amazing. Okay. Uh, uh, you go, little guy? No, you no, you go, you go, you go, you go. Oh, well, I mean... I'm very tempted to pick my very favorite candy bar, um, which I'm actually going to leave unselected. I'm going to leave this one on the table of Snickers because I think I think it's the top dog. But to represent Quick Step in their season, I have to pick the Payday. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I like <laughs> that's it. That's pretty good. Uh, um, I was just going to say they would be uh, since they won the most, they would be a candy bar I'd actually eat. So they'd be some hippie dark chocolate. Uh, vegan thing that I'd buy at the co-op. Oh, wow. <laughs> and on that depressing note... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the worst chocolate bar of all time. Uh, sure, you, guy. Tim, I am I am 100% not surprised that most of your candies, your uh, your higher rated candy selection yeah. skewed toward the just pure sugar straight in the yeah. veins kick. No <laughs> subtlety, no beating around the bush with, with uh, many flavors and textures, just basically mainline sugar. Yeah. 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 I love it. I didn't even. <laughs> Basically, uh, there's so many the, we did leave on the table, oh, including yeah. oh. one of my favorite, like, actual candy bar. Like, if we're going to go candy bar, yeah. I'm a huge fan of the Take Five bar. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That's interesting. Can I, can I go, can I give one for Confidus? Cause I, they're not World Tour yet next year, but Circus Peanut all the way. It's always a total, <laughs> total clown show there. You see mm-hmm. it. It's always at the convenience store, just like Confidus. They never go away. And you always see them and you think, huh, they still make those. Same thing. Uh, and with that, we'd like to thank you for listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. You can rate us and review us on Apple Candy Podcasts. Rating, please. Or check us out on Spotify. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Slow Ride Pod. We'd, also, we'd like to thank all of the members and those of you that are going to head on over to WideAnglePodium.com to select Donate to become a member during our donor drive thank you so much for those that are existing members and remember if you do sign up as a recurring member or if you're an existing recurring member you will be entered into the trek sponsored Na- belgian national champion cyclocross jersey giveaway yes. from two narrates the kevin powells of cyclocross yes that is right yeah. so once again we'd also like to thank um, the folks over at works, you can head on over to your and enter in the promo code clean bike to save 15% on your next power washer, portable power washer. And with that, this is Tim in Orlando, Florida. And this is Matt in Minneapolis. And this is Spencer in Boston reminding you to always wave at all your fellow cyclists that you see out on the road, even if they only gave you Smarties in your Halloween bag. Oh, they are the worst. The Slow Ride Podcast. Bikes, advice, and rumors straight from the source. TheSlowRidePodcast.com and on Twitter at TheSlowRidePod.